Did you know there were actually five Dirty Harry movies? I mean, you want to talk chronologically confused about sequels. Can you name any of the sequels after Dirty Harry? I couldn't. I mean, I had to look them up. Magnum Force, The Enforcer, Sudden Impact, and The Deadpool. What's funny is I'd seen all of these movies, but I couldn't remember their titles. Oh, sure, the words Dirty Harry are always somewhere on the poster, but they're not on the spine of the movie. If you're looking for them in a video store or a blockbuster, you're fucked. How am I supposed to find them or remember what order they came in? They couldn't throw us a bone and put the words Dirty Harry somewhere in the title, like Dirty Harry 2 Magnum Force? It was almost like they were ashamed to put his name in the title. They did it with the novels, though, and there were like 12 of those. I guess it's not such a big deal, because really the only way you can get these movies anymore is in the DVD box set, so I don't really know what I'm complaining about. I, I guess I'm not very good at this. Uh, what I'm getting at, though, is in 1990, two years after the very last Dirty Harry movie, SURPRISE SHITTY NES GAME! Go ahead. Make my day. Yeah, there's a Dirty Harry NES game, and believe me, it eats. You just saw the best part of it. I did a little research, and by research I mean I spent 10 seconds and Googled it, but everywhere I looked online they call this game Dirty Harry, The War Against Drugs. And I'm not sure why, because every part of this game, the box, the cartridge, the instructions, and every screen of this game just says Dirty Harry. I guess they're just trying to pretend like this game has a plot, which is kind of cute, actually. Whoa, shit! Whoa, this game doesn't fuck around. Right off the bat, you get jumped on both sides by some hardcore pipe-hitting motherfuckers. Oh, you wanna spawn camp me, you little bitches? Well, we'll see about that. Yeah, uh, come on! Yeah, come get some! Oh, you want some too? Fuck you! Why don't you suck on the end of this 44 Magnum, huh? Uh! Yeah, that's right. You'd better be ready for anything at all times in this game, because everybody in this fucking city hates Harry Callahan. There's guys who want to punch you, there's guys with knives, guys with bats, guys with guns, and these guys come on like fucking maniacs. I mean, they're coming from everywhere. They're coming out of doorways, they're jumping out of windows, and worst of all, they keep fucking respawning just off screen, so you can never actually clear out an area. Every time you move, more guys appear. And that'd be bad enough if you didn't also have to deal with assholes on the rooftops throwing bricks and Molotov cocktails at you. And if you pass under them, they'll drop a net on you, and then the guys with bats will really go to town on your ass. Man, there's a zillion of these guys, but you have to conserve your ammo for when you really need it, and you have to keep searching around for more. And come to think of it, how much ammo do I have? Did I fire six shots or only five? I've been taking hits like crazy, am I dying? How many lives do I have? Well, seeing as how this is Dirty Harry, the most confusing game ever made, there's no fucking graphics on the screen to tell you anything, so to be honest, I kind of lost track myself. The only way to tell is to go to the fucking inventory screen by hitting the start button, because that's the only place you ever get to look at your life bar or ammo count. They couldn't put a life bar on the top of the screen while you were playing? Was that too much to ask? How am I supposed to know when I'm supposed to eat a chili dog to heal myself? I'm just supposed to sense it? As for the rest of the graphics, they're not bad, but tell me, does this guy really look like Dirty Harry? Did Harry ever wear a blue sports jacket and sunglasses? He looks more like the Terminator. Hasta la vista, punk. Anyway, most of the time you'll be using your fist to take out bad guys, but you've also got a kick move which you can do by holding up on the D-pad and pushing A. It seems to do a little more damage, but man, the hit detection is way off. I mean, come on, how am I missing this guy? There's really not much point in doing this when you could just punch him, but I just like the idea of Clint Eastwood running around the city kicking people in the fucking nuts. Wham! Oh! Oh! Ooh, right in the daddy zone! Man, don't fuck with Harry Callahan, he will bust your balls! It wasn't until an embarrassingly long amount of time later that I realized the kick is mainly used to search rooms. I didn't even know you could search rooms, and then I just sort of accidentally kicked a nightstand and something fell out of it. And actually, this is what you spend the majority of the game doing, just running around kicking everything to find items. I mean, that's a great cop, right? Harry just rips open your door with a crowbar, runs inside, and just starts kicking your shit open and blowing open your safe with plastic explosives. No wonder everyone wants this guy dead. He just runs in and wrecks your goddamn house! But I can almost never tell what I'm finding. The icons pop up way too briefly to tell exactly what I got. What was that, money? What can I spend money on? This issue never seems to come up in the game since you never go to a store. You can also find drugs, but again, I have no idea what that accomplishes. Most of the time you're just finding more bombs and crowbars, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me since you're using crowbars to break into people's apartments and bombs to blow open their safes just to find more bombs and crowbars so you can break into more people's stuff. Really, you're just hoping to find ammo and chili dogs. Yeah, people keep chili dogs inside their nightstands. What? Don't you? Sometimes there are actually gang members hiding in the drawers who leap out and attack, and I question how that's possible if I've already searched it from top to bottom by kicking it open. 
And that's kind of annoying, but the worst part is that half the time, the furniture is actually booby-trapped with bombs, and you take damage the instant you kick them. And there's no way to tell which ones are trapped, but you have to search everything to get crowbars, bombs, and chili dogs. That's just fucking cheap. You know what else is cheap? Sometimes you'd be walking around in a building when FUCK ME! Some guy just stuck his head around the door and shot me. Of course, once you go inside to kill his stupid ass, he's nowhere to be seen. Where the fuck did he go? It's bullshit! Some rooms have security lasers that electrocute you because that's how lasers work. And they're a real fucking bitch too because they move too fast. And if you hit one, the other one is pretty much guaranteed to fuck you in the ass. Damn! Fuck! And about half the rooms you go into have fucking anacondas in them. What the fuck? That's just kind of random, isn't it? Why is this city suddenly crawling with anacondas? And of course, they damage you just by touching you. I didn't think anacondas were that aggressive and poisonous to the touch, but they'll chase you all over the room, and there's only a couple of ways you can kill them. You'd think you could just shoot them, but of course, the controls suck too hard. You can only aim in 45 degree increments, and you do that by drawing the gun with the B button and then tapping up on the D-pad. And this is really hard to get used to, and of course, you can't aim down. Well, you can, but only when the game feels like it. For some reason, you can only aim down when you're on a catwalk or a fire escape, but not when you're being attacked by deadly serpents! The first way to kill the snakes you'll find, mostly by accident, is to kill them with a plastic explosive, usually when you're trying to open a safe. But it turns out, the plastic explosives are probably the safest way to kill them. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Fighting snakes with plastic explosives? Well, I guess it makes sense. I mean, you'd never be able to shoot a snake with a handgun. That's just stupid. They're all, like, narrow and tube-shaped. It's impossible. I mean, if you've got snakes, bottom line, you might as well just set your charges and blow the entire building up. It's the only way to be sure. The only other way to kill them is to jump on top of them, but this option sucks even worse. Sometimes it kills them, sometimes it just stuns the snake, and most of the time it doesn't do anything. I can't tell if it's a glitch, or just poor hit detection, or if I just suck. I just don't understand why there are so many fucking snakes in this game. Remember that from the movies? Clint Eastwood jumping up and down in front of giant snakes? I know the main villain of this game is called the Anaconda, and I had to look that up online, by the way, but is that supposed to be his trademark, infesting the inner cities with constrictor snakes? There's one room where you see some enormous Schwarzenegger dude blocking the doorway. He doesn't really do anything to you, and he's apparently impervious to bullets because of his, uh, white t-shirt. Whatever happened to this being the most powerful fucking handgun ever made? But if you approach him, he just punches the fuck out of you and sends you flying all the way across the room. So I figure maybe I need to find a rocket launcher or something, and I go someplace else. In the next building, I find a pimp-looking character in a white suit flipping a coin. He doesn't really do anything either, and he can't die. Are you supposed to talk to him? No, and even if I was, I don't know how. Are you supposed to give him something? No, and again, I wouldn't know how. But, no, if you jump up and down in front of him, he trades suits with you. What? <laughs> what the fuck just happened? I started jumping up and down in front of a pimp, and then he just started taking his clothes off and gave them to me right there in the hallway. I mean, I admit it's been a while, but I really don't remember that from the movie, at least not unless there's some kind of dirty Harry porno that I missed. Well, now that I have the white suit, Harry looks like he should be in Miami Vice or some shit. And now the Schwarzenegger guy just lets you pass without a fight. Okay, seriously, how would you ever figure that out on your own? Is it just me? Were you watching me play this game and going, No, you idiot, you need a white suit! Go find a pimp and jump up and down in front of him and he'll give you a white suit, you fucking moron! I mean, I found the white suit completely by accident, and even when I had it, my first thought was, Oh, now I can pass the bouncer guy. The first time I tried to approach him, he punched me across the fucking room! Why would I try approaching him again in any colored suit? Anyway, inside that room, there's a woman who apparently does nothing. What is she, a hostage? She never seems to want to leave the room, so is she just a hooker with a very protective bodyguard? I don't know, but you're supposed to jump up and down in front of her too, obviously, right? And when you do that, she gives you- Fuck, what were those? They all vanished too fast. I had to go back and look, and apparently there are three badges, which are supposed to be extra lives, not that you'd have any way of knowing that. It all happens in the blink of an eye, and again, you have to jump in the exact right spot for her to give them to you. You'll also find some guy dribbling a white basketball- Wait, I died? How the fuck did that happen? <sighs> if you jump up and down in front of that guy, he gives you- I, I don't know what that is. I think it's a bulletproof vest. But why would he have that? Why would he give it to you? Is he impressed that some white men can jump? 
There's also some guy you meet with a boombox, and if you jump around in front of him, he gives you plastic explosives. And that's about the only one that makes sense, because, as we all know, Chris Cross will make you... I also found some kind of homeless bag lady, and she gives you chili dogs. You know what? Why don't you, uh, why don't you keep those, <laughs> crazy homeless lady? I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to be- Oh shit, I just fell into the sewer. And of course you can't see anything in the sewer until you have a flashlight, but again, the icons flash up so fast I never even knew I had a flashlight until I fell into the sewer by accident again! None of the gang members seem to go down here, but the whole place is crawling with rats, roaches, and remote control exploding cars. What, like in the Deadpool? Talk about a weird little piece of trivia from the movies to put in your game there. Well, the only way to kill the rats and bugs is to jump on them, but it, of course it's not that easy. You can't just go jumping around because there's also toxic waste dripping from the ceiling and exposed wiring everywhere. So you're always getting bitten or electrocuted or burned all the goddamn time. It's never a good sign when the majority of the very first stage of the game is a sewer level. Well, I've made my way through the entire sewer, but now I can't get up to that tunnel up there. There's a ladder and a pipe along the ceiling you can climb across, but I can't reach it no matter what I do. Damn! So am I missing something? Why can't I get up there? You're telling me this entire thing was just a dead end? Well, I guess so, but what the fuck was the point of that? So I get out of the sewer and I wander around some more, and then I find some kind of boss. But all he does is jump up in the air and throw grenades at you. Now look at this guy, this guy is phenomenal! He must have a 50-foot vertical leap! I never figured out a good way to beat him, I just shot him a lot and tried not to die. Now I find a new area with a lot more buildings to explore, and after the boss I'm low on ammo, so I have to poke around some more- OH NOW WHAT?! Of course, one of the first rooms I find is filled with poison gas, and I die almost instantly. Actually, quite a few of the rooms around here are filled with this same gas, and the only way to survive is to find a gas mask, which of course I never found, but I had to keep searching, going into gas rooms and taking damage. Oh, it gets worse. There's another room I go into and search, when all of a sudden I realize there's no way out. What the fuck? Most of the time there's a door on the left-hand side, but not here. There's just ha 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 spray-painted on the fucking wall, as if this was some kind of death trap conceived by the Joker. I tried doing everything, punching the walls, shooting the walls, jumping around, kicking stuff, placing bombs on furniture, placing bombs on the wall. Now, of course, you're probably just thinking I'm fucking stupid. There is some way out of this room. But no, I looked it up. This is actually some kind of sadistic fucking Easter egg programmed by the designers into the game. There is no way out of here. It's just a trap. It forces you to reset the game because there isn't even a way in here to kill yourself. What was the point of that? You know. Incompetence I can handle, but this isn't even a glitch. This is the game designers fucking you up the ass with a splintered broomstick and then breaking off the handle. They're deliberately wasting your time. The programmers of this game want you to fail, and when you do, they write ha ha on the wall and they laugh about it. Ha ha! Well, if this game isn't gonna play fair, then why the hell should I? I mean, it's Dirty Harry guy! How do you fuck that up? You wouldn't think there'd be a lot of platforming in a Dirty Harry game, but there is. And this is where the controls really fuck you over. You jump by pressing the A and B buttons together, which is okay, I guess. There's not much else they could do with the design they settle on. But there's some kind of delay between pushing the buttons and Harry jumping. Worse, you have to be moving in the direction you want to jump already. So if you're already on the edge of a platform, you can easily run right off as you're preparing to jump. Naturally, this game is filled with fucking diabolical jumping puzzles, and you're hampered by enemies shooting at you, and the level design is custom made to piss you off. Look at this spot. All I want to do is cross over this section by climbing across the wires, but suddenly this guy appears, I get shot, and I fall. But the section I just climbed over is walled off on both sides, so the only way out is to go into this building, run all the way through, and then go all the way through hell and back to get where I just started, so you really don't want to fall down. So I find a place to jump down and take him out, and fuck, I missed the jump back up! So you go back, you climb along the wire, and oh, come on! I got shocked by the transformer? I didn't even know that could hurt you! So now what do I do? I tried dropping down on this platform just before the power transformer, but if I try to run across, there's a gap in the platform and I fall. I can't jump over the gap because when I do, I instantly cling to the wire and run right into the transformer again. Why would they do this? It's impossible! I can't jump off the wire and, wait, what?! 
How the hell did I just do that? Did I just run across? I, seriously, I have no idea how the fuck I just did that. And what if I need to do it again? Damn it! Someone tell me what the hell I just did right! Oh, wait, where the hell am I? Oh my god, I'm right back to where I fought the last fucking boss! I did all that and I went in a fucking circle? God! Fuck! Where am I supposed to be going? Every place I go to looks exactly like every place else! But I want to at least finish the first fucking level, so I keep wandering around until- Oh crap! I'm being attacked by Solid Snake, and he's pissed off! He shoots like a maniac, but you can just duck for hours and he never adjusts his aim. What the hell is wrong with him? But of course you can't shoot him from down here because he's shooting so fast he'll hit you too. But all you gotta do is climb up on the roof, and for some reason the game mercifully lets you shoot downward from here, I don't know why. And he never even seems to react, he just keeps shooting straight ahead. Hey, Snake! Hello? I'm up here, Dave! Hey, Snake! Up here! Come up! Snake, what's wrong? Snake! 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 <laughs> Actually, that was kind of fun, if badly programmed. And oh no, not another telephone pole and wire thing. Of course, naturally, I get shot off fucking instantly. But this time it doesn't really seem to matter because I'm in a new location, so I might as well explore. There's a few buildings around here, but I decided to check out the sewers because I haven't been in this one yet. Is it worth questioning how Harry is holding onto the flashlight when he's using both hands to cling onto the pipe? Were sewer levels ever compelling? From the beginning of gaming history, all they ever were was a way to needlessly pad out the game with mazes, insane jumping puzzles, bullshit death traps, switch flipping, and giant rat stomping. It's just about the fastest way I can think of to kill my enthusiasm for any game. This is the fastest way. Hey, Miss Bond. Hey, pretty girl. Yeah, you're the prettiest rat in the world, aren't you? Anyway, after about ten minutes of running around, I get out of the sewers... Oh, oh no. No, no, please, God, don't tell me- I am! I'm at the beginning of the fucking stage! You sons of bitches! You made me fight all the way back to the beginning of the stage? And now I have to run my ass all the way back? Through three quarters of the level? Just so I have the privilege of trying the fucking wire crossing again? I can't even go back through the sewers because that's the same exact fucking place I was blocked at before! That's just cruel! It's bad enough that it's almost impossible to cross this area in the first place, but I have to spend five minutes just getting back there to try again every time I fail? Fuck you, game! Fuck you! I don't have to put up with this shit! I have my rights! I have my rights! It was Callahan the big one! He did this to me! Ah! Someone is there at the turnstile! The girl with kaleidoscope eyes! So after about an hour and the most miraculous wire crossing I've ever done, I find another sewer. And I'm warning you, I'm seriously gonna fucking lose it if it's another way back to the beginning of the stage. But mercifully, no. This sewer is red, so at least it looks different this time around. So you run around, flip switches, same deal. But what's really starting to piss me off is that the toy cars keep spawning just off screen, so every time I make a jump, I land right on top of one. Oh, great. I find a dead bum in the sewers. Oh, that's probably the most cheerful thing I've ever seen in a video game. Well, actually, he's not dead. You just have to know what to do. And it's not jumping up and down in front of him. If you eat a chili dog in front of him, he gives you free lives. Wow. Yeah, just imagine what he'd do if you gave him the cocaine. Oh, oh my god! Thank you, Mr. Spoonie Man! This is the greatest chili dog I ever had in my life! And wow! It's even got real chili on it! Most of the time when I find hot dogs down in the sewers, they have chili on them, but not the kind of chili you expect. Found that out the hard way. Eventually you reach another big room when BAM! Some guy in a big glass bubble appears. Who the fuck is that? Dr. Wily's bald cousin? I mean, seriously, where the fuck did he come from? Was he always there? Why wasn't Harry able to see that until the screen scrolled far enough to reveal him? Anyway, I looked this up too, and apparently he's called the Toy Maker, the boss of the level, and he does... well, he does... absolutely nothing. Honest to God, he just stands there. He doesn't do anything. Oh, it looks like he's doing stuff. He's fucking with his levers and his computers, but nothing happens. That's it. What's he doing? Controlling the cars that keep dropping down from the other side of the room and are coming nowhere near me? Naturally, he's bulletproof and fistproof, so you have to turn this valve, which in itself is a little weird because you can't do that to any other valve you see in this level. When you do that, it raises the water level, electrocutes him to death, and immediately drowns you. So you start over. 
You raise the water level, try to find a safe place to hang out. I guess I'll try the ladder. Oh, damn! I hate these jumping controls. They suck! Well, okay, the toy maker's dead, but now what? The water won't come down. I'm stuck on this fucking ladder. Turns out you can jump on the toy sailboat, which somehow supports your weight, but it stops in the middle of the room. So I switch the valve again? No. Jump? No. Well, you have to shoot the beach ball, but whoops, I can't do that because I have chili dogs selected as my current item. And for some reason, I can't switch back to the fucking gun. Ever since the boss showed up, I can't access the inventory menu. What the ass? Why can't I switch items? This is a total game breaker glitch that forces me to kill myself and select the gun before the boss appears. Or I could just stand there and eat chili dogs, I guess. Okay, so you shoot the beach ball, ride the sailboat to the end, and you get something. I think it's extra lives. I don't know. But of course you have to go through more sewers. Shouldn't this level be over? I beat the boss. What the hell else you want? Naturally, there's a bunch more jumping puzzles that kill you if you fall in the water, so you'd better pray those extra lives are enough to carry you to the end. Fuck! Cock! Balls! Go! So, you keep going, you climb a ladder, and... What, that's it? The level's over? Well, that just sort of petered out, didn't it? Why couldn't this end on the logical conclusion point after beating the boss? It's like playing Mega Man, beating one of the Robot Masters, but then having to go through a few more rooms before the game allows you to leave the level. I mean, it's just, it's just completely jarring and unsettling. It's almost like you just ran out of ideas. Anyway, as for the second level, what happened...